This lesson is for section 13.6 and 13.7. We're going to be rewriting fractional expressions as the sum of two simpler fractions, and we call that partial fractions. So basically, the idea of what we're doing today rests on these two um, statements here. If ax plus b is equal to 7x minus 12, then for all x, a must, has to, must have to equal 7, and b must equal negative 12. So this is just saying that the coefficients here must be equivalent. Okay, b must equal negative 12, a must equal 7. In the next statement, if px cubed plus qx squared plus rx plus s is equal to negative 4x squared plus 1 for all x, then p must equal 0 because you do not see an x cubed term over here. So you assume that that's 0 x cubed and so on. So it's just, again, equating coefficients. The q would have to equal negative 4. There is no linear term over here, so that would mean r would equal 0. And s, your constant, has to equal 1. So we have two assumptions when we're writing partial fractions. We're going to assume that our fraction is always a proper fraction, uh, meaning that the numerator's degree, so like this, 3x cubed over 3x to the third, this would be a proper fraction because your numerator's degree is smaller than your denominator's degree. If it was flipped, so if we had 3x squared over 3x cubed, then this would be an improper fraction. Oh gosh, I didn't even flip it, sorry. 3x cubed over 3x squared. That would be an improper fraction because the denominator um, is smaller than the numerator, right? That number is smaller than that. Um, and then our second uh, assumption is that our denominator is factorable, okay? And we're going to split that up into the factors then of the denominator to rewrite the partial fraction. The reason why we do it is because in calculus, you will start rewriting fractions that are really nasty, some functions that are really difficult to find an antiderivative for. Uh, but when you break it up into smaller fractions, it becomes a lot easier. So let me go through just a general in intro to writing partial fractions. And then I would like, so don't write anything down. Um, and then we're going to go through these three examples together. And I'll leave you to do the fourth one on your own. So if I asked you to find the sum of these two fractions here, I think this process would be very easy for you. You would find the common denominator between these, do a little bit of computation, and you would arrive at this um, fraction here. Now that process, like I said, is pretty easy for you. You guys have been doing this pretty much all last year and this year as well. But if I asked you to go in reverse, given this uh, fraction, I want you to rewrite it as the sum of two smaller fractions. This is not so easy of a process. So that's what we're going to be practicing learning how to do today. So here's the basic gist of what you want to do. Your first step is always to factor the bottom. So notice I'm just factoring the bottom. Now this is what I'm going to separate my two partial fractions into. So each partial fraction here um, has one of those factors in the denominator. Okay. Now since I do not know um, what is going to go in the numerator, I'm going to place an A here and a B. This is going to represent the, uh, the numerators. Okay. It's a constant. And then we're going to multiply through by the denominator here. So I'm going to multiply by this denominator here to get rid of it in the left side. And multiplying on the right side, I'm left with a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 2. Now I have two methods for solving how to uh, find rewrite you know, a and b. Um, and our first method is to equate coefficients. Okay, This goes back to what we talked about, about the, the general basic idea uh, concept in, in writing partial fractions. So. If I look at my, my constants, or my, I'm sorry, my coefficients here in front of the x, I have a 5 here, and a and b would have an x term as well, a linear term here. So if I rewrite an equation here for the linear term, 5x should equal ax plus bx. In other words, 5 should equal a plus b. So here is one equation here. Now if I look at my constant term, this time I have my constant is negative 4, a times 1 will be a constant because it's just a constant times a constant and b times negative 2 will also produce a constant so for my constants I get this equation negative 4 equals a times 1 plus b times negative 2 and I'm left with this equation negative 4 equals a minus 2b so this is technically a system of equations that you could solve let's say I multiply throughout by negative 1 here I end up with a solution um, a equals 3 and b equals 2 once I plug it in uh, back in and there, that's basically how you would solve this. Now there's a second, I think, easier method for doing this problem, um, and that method is plugging and chugging convenient values of x. So what I mean by that is, is selecting values that is going to make um, your linear term here disappear. So for example, in this case, I could pick x equal to negative 1. If I plug in negative 1 here, this term is going to completely drop out. And now I have negative 9 equal to b times negative 3. 
in other words, b would equal 3. Um, I could also choose a value, x equals, let's say, 2, because now this term will drop out. If x equals 2, this will become a 0. So basically, you're picking zeros um, for this. And so if I plug in x equals 2, now I have 2 plus 1 here, and 5 times 2 minus 4. So 10 minus 4 is 6 equals, if I plug in 2 here, 3a, and a will equal 2. So there I just found my constants much quicker, I think, than just equating coefficients. So what you're going to probably most likely end up doing in your problems is do a combination of equating coefficients and the plug and chug method. So let's do some practice problems. All right, let's try problem number one now. So we're going to factor the denominator just like we did in the first step. We have x minus 5 and x plus 3. I'm going to not change the numerator at all. Um, but then I'm going to rewrite partial fractions. So I have one, one fraction with the denominator linear term x minus 5, the other one with x plus 3. And then I'm going to place a and b, or constants, above that in the numerator. Um, so the first step to do uh, is to rewrite the partial fractions. Now your next step is to multiply throughout by the denominator so that you can only deal with numerators. So if I multiply the left side by our denominator, I'm left with 5x minus 1. On the right hand side, I'm left with a times x plus 3 and b times x minus 5. Now in this case, I can pick values of x that are convenient for me and just plug and chug. So if I let x equal negative 3, this term will drop out. And I'm left with negative 15 minus 1. So I'm just plugging in negative 3 here. That's how I'm getting that negative 15 equal to b times negative 3 minus 5, which gives me negative 8. So I'm left with negative 8b equals negative 16. In other words, b would equal 2. Now to solve for the a variable, that constant, I can do the same thing. If I let x equal 5, this term now drops out. So if I let x equal 5, I'm left with 25 minus 1, so 24 equals, plugging in 5 here, 8a, and a will equal 3. So I could also have done that exact same thing by just equating coefficients. If I had equated coefficients, this would be a slightly longer process because you're dealing with a system of equations then, but I would have 5 equal to a plus b, because these would give me linear um, terms. So I'd have 5 equals a plus b. And for the constant term, I would have negative 1 equal to 3a and negative 5b. So this would be a system that I could solve. And if you do solve this system, you will end up with those same two um, values for a and b. So that means that 5x minus 1 over x minus 5 times x plus 3 can be rewritten as 3 over x minus 5 plus 2 over x plus 3. So this is breaking it down into the sum of two simpler partial fractions. Now the second type of question that you're going to see is called a repeated linear. Okay, This is where you see in the denominator um, a linear term that's been or that's repeated more than once. So let me factor the denominator. I'm going to pull out that x, and I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I keep the numerator the exact same. Now in the denominator, I notice that this factors into x times x minus 2 squared. So this is what I mean by a repeated linear factor. So this repeated factor actually has to, it changes a little bit how we set up our partial fractions. In our partial fraction, we still have a over x. Remember, this is one of our linear terms here. So a over x plus b over x minus 2. And now we're going to introduce c over x minus 2 squared. So for each, um, uh, however many repeated linear factors you have is how many times you'll set up that, that linear factor. So let me try to explain again. If it was like x minus 3 cubed, we would have one fraction, x minus 3, you know, put a constant above it, b over x minus 3 squared and then c over x minus 3 cubed. So you need to set up 1 for every um, single one, because you do not know maybe b equals 0, maybe c equals 0, but you need to know, um, or you, it could have the case where you have x minus 3 squared or x minus 3 cubed um, in your original partial fractions. OK, so anyhow, coming back up to this, um, now I'm going to solve this here for a, b, and c by multiplying throughout by the denominator. When I do that, on the left-hand side, it just drops to negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. And on the right-hand side, I'm left with a times x minus 2 squared. 
the b term will only have an x and an x minus 2 to multiply by, and the c will only have an x term, because this already has x minus 2 squared. All right, now I'm going to do a combination of equating coefficients and picking convenient values of x. If I plug in x is 0, the only thing that drops out is this term here. I'm still left, or I'm sorry, this actually will drop off too. So if I let x equal 0, this would be a convenient value because this term will completely drop out because I have a 0 here, b times 0 times that dro drops out. And I'm left with just my a term then. So if I let x equal 0, negative x squared is 0 plus 2x plus 2 times 0 is still 0. So I have 4 equals a times negative 2 squared. So 4 equals 4a, a will equal 1. So that's how I can solve very quickly for, for the variable a. Now if I plug in um, x equal to 2, I can also solve for c very quickly as well. If I let x equal 2, let me do this in another color. If x equals 2, then this term will completely drop out, as will this term. So now if x equals 2, um, on the left-hand side I'll have negative 4 plus uh, 8. Oh, I'm sorry, plus 4, my bad. 2 times 2 is not 8. It's 4 plus 4 equals c times 2, so 2c. Two so I now have 4 equals 2c, so c will equal 2. Now to find um, value for b, it's a little bit trickier. I'm, I can't just plug in a convenient value because otherwise the b term just keeps dropping out. So now I'm going to equate coefficients. So I'm going to try to find, um, I can either use a quadratic because b times x times x gives me bx squared. So I could use that. Or I could also say um, bx times negative 2. So negative 2bx is a linear term, but in any case, I can use any of those that I want. I'm going to use the quadratic, okay? I have bx squared from this term. This is not a quadratic, so that's, I don't have to worry about that at all. I will get a quadratic from here. I'll get an ax squared term, okay? So I'll get an ax squared term here, and I'm just going to look at the quadratic in the left. So I have the equation negative 1, because this is the coefficient in front of that x squared term, that quadratic term, equals a plus b. ax squared plus bx squared has to equal negative 1x squared. So that's how I have this new equation here, negative 1 equals a plus b. Now remember, I already know what 1 equals, or I'm sorry, what a equals, so I just plug in 1 plus b, and I end up with b equaling negative 2. So now I can rewrite my answer here as the sum of three smaller partial fractions. So I end up with um, 1 over x plus uh, b is negative 2, so I guess it should be minus 2 over x minus 2, and then plus 2 over x minus 2 squared. Okay, And that's how you would do and set up a repeated linear factor. Okay, the last type of problem that we're going to go through is a problem with an irreducible quadratic. So um, I'm going to practice something called factoring by grouping also with you guys. It's been probably a while since you've seen it. But um, if I split up these two terms here and, and factor the first two by grouping them, I can factor out an x squared, and I'm left with x minus 1. And in the second two terms, if I just pull out a 1, I'm left with x minus 1. So notice that these are repeated. x minus 1 is repeated. So the denominator is going to factor into x minus 1 times x squared plus 1. Okay. So that was factoring by grouping. Now in the numerator, I'm just going to keep that the exact same. And so I'm left with this factored expression here. And I want to now set up my partial fractions. So one partial fraction will be a over x minus 1. Now my second partial fraction will actually have to be linear. So it's going to be bx plus c, because x squared plus 1 cannot be broken up into real um, numbers. It, you could only get complex factors here. So um, I keep that irreducible. This is an irreducible quadratic, meaning I cannot reduce this anymore or factor this. But in the numerator, I need to set up a linear term, bx plus c. So the, notice that the uh, the numerator is one degree less than the denominator, so this is one degree less than the denominator here as well. So this is the new setup for you, a little slightly different than the last two repeated linear or the very basic one that we started off with. 
But ideally, or I mean the idea here is to solve it the exact same. So we're going to multiply throughout now that we have our setup. And again, this is just the key thing that you have to remember to do when you set this up. But you're just going to multiply throughout by x minus 1 times x squared plus 1. So multiply throughout by the denominator. And the left side will just stay x squared plus 4x plus 1. On the right hand side we now have a times x squared plus 1. And on the right, I mean uh, for the bx plus c term, we have bx plus c, make sure you put that in parentheses, multiplied by x minus 1. So you would have um, something here that you would have to FOIL um, and, and consider that when you're writing out and equating um, your coefficients. So the only value that I can plug in that would be convenient for me here is x equal to 1. If x equals 1, then this term, the bx plus c, drops out. Okay, because this is what equals 0, and the whole thing would become 0. So if I let x equal to 1, then I have 1 plus 4 plus 1 on the left equals a times 1 plus 1, so 2. So I have 6 equals 2a. And again, that's because this whole term right here drops out. And I'm left with a equals 3. Okay, so that's an easy way to solve for a. Now to solve for b, I can't um, plug in another convenient value, it just won't work because I can't ever get this term here to drop out. So in this case I'm going to have to do a combination of you know, the plugging and chugging like I just did, but also equating coefficients. So let's try to equate the uh, quadratic coefficients first. So I have 1x squared here. So 1 should equal, on the right hand side, ax squared. So a plus this term here would give me bx squared, so a plus b. So now I know that since a equals 3, I can plug that in, b must equal then negative 2. Okay. Now to find c, I could use either, um, I, you know, I think it's probably easier just to use the constant term because you'd have to, you'd have to realize that um, if you wanted to use the linear cx, you also have bx, negative bx here as well. So you'd have to you know, include that in your, um, your equation to, to solve for c in that case. I can do both, just hopefully I didn't just confuse you here, but I'm going to use the uh, constant because c times negative 1 has to give me a constant. And over here, a times 1 has to give me a constant as well. And on the left, I just have this constant 1. So 1 must equal a times 1, a and c times negative 1, so negative c. And again, if I plug in a equals 3 here, then I get the equations, uh, and then c equals 2. Okay? All right, now, what I was trying to say before was, let's say I wanted to use the linear term, this 4x here. Okay? I would have 4 equals, on this right-hand side here, a times either of those do not give me a linear term, so this has no a involved in it. And then here, if I were to um, FOIL all this out, obviously that bx squared, we already talked about that one, but you would also get negative bx here. So I'd have a negative b, and then a positive, or I'm sorry, um, uh, yeah, positive cx, so plus c. So I have 4 equals negative b plus c, and if I plug in negative 2 here now, I get opposite of opposite 2, so positive 2 plus c equals 4, and that's how I also get c equal to 2. But in a lot of cases, students will forget this term here and just have um, cx, so they'll, they'll write c equals 4 um, without actually realizing that they would get another linear term here if they were to FOIL it out. So anyhow, if I were to answer this um, in the end, I'd have 3 over x plus, or it's, no, it's x minus 1, um, and where is it, sorry, plus negative 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 1. Remember, this is your b plus bx plus c, okay? Um, and then I, I can also go a little bit further here and write this. I wouldn't take off if you didn't do this, but you could also write that as the, the uh, difference of, you know, factor off the negative 2 here, so you can write that as negative 2 times x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So. I think that's how I have it in my key as well. But that's the gist of it. So that's an irreducible quadratic, okay? An irreducible meaning you can't factor. x squared plus 1 is not factorable, so we left it. Um, and then we did one where we had a repeated linear. So the, the trick here is to just make sure that you have it written twice if it was a squared. Um, if it was cubed, then you would have, you know, three different partial fractions. 
And then the first one was a very basic one where we could just, um, you know, pick a convenient value for the x in order to solve for the b and the a coefficient or constant. All right, the last question is you're all on your own for. Please check with the key. Just try it. Um, this one's a pretty basic one. You will get a fraction, though, for your values. Don't think it's wrong. Just try to rewrite it. Think about how you could rewrite that. Um, you know, if you have a fraction three-fifths over some kind of linear term, how would you rewrite this so that it's a nice, clean um, answer? And then you'll see the key. If you, don't, if you don't understand what I'm saying, look at the key, um, and you should be able to do just fine. All right, that's the end of the lesson. I will see you in class tomorrow.